We'll be talking about storage device and configuration. The overview, first we're going to talk about the storage types and configuration. Then we're going to talk about tiering. We're also going to talk about RAID and file system types. This types and configurations that we have are removable media, interface types, access speeds, solid states. We also have USB drives and tapes. Removable media. First thing we have is disks. Disks are also known as CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Each one has their own storage capacity, and each one has their own uses. CD is most of the time 700 megs, and they're most of the time used for transferring files from one computer to another computer. But with networking, CDs have gone out a lot. And also with USBs, CDs aren't as popular either. DVDs are mainly used for movies now, and Blu-rays are mainly used for movies. However, PlayStation, they do use Blu-rays, and they own Blu-rays, so if any company wants to use Blu-rays, they have to contact PlayStation to be able to use Blu-rays. Floppy disks. Floppy disks are pretty much obsolete now. However, people still use floppy disks. Most floppy disks can only hold 1.54 megs, but floppy disks are still being used today to transfer small Word documents from one computer to another. And also, floppy disks are some of the primary means for formatting a BIOS whenever it comes to a computer. We will talk about that later, too. USB drives. USB drives are replacing just about everything. Why carry a CD that is fragile and you can break it whenever you can just load it onto a thumb drive and then take that wherever you need? And on top of that, a CD can only hold less than a gig, whereas a thumb drive can hold sometimes up to 64 gigs. On removable media, these can either be fixed or removable. A fix means that it's pretty much part of the PC. And you have to take something apart of the PC, take something out of the PC to be able to remove that. Removable uses maybe a USB drive or uses certain ports inside the motherboard. We'll talk about that later too. Interface types. The types of interface that we have are ATA, IDE, SATA, SAS, and SCSI. We talked about SCSI a lot, however there's still a little bit left to talk about SCSI. With advanced technology attachments, these are just particular ports that you use on your computer. They are actually fairly old and most of the time they're also called PATA, P-A-T-A, which stands for Parallel Advanced Technology Attachments. IDE, Integrated Device Electronics. All an IDE is is the computer chip attached to a hard drive. This allows the computer to be able to access the hard drive with software that's provided with the hard drive without having to get additional software to use the hard drive itself. SATA, Serial ATA, these are faster, and they are better than the regular ATA or PATA. SATAs are also hot swappable. They're used on the motherboard, and they're the most common types. There are three different types. You have SATA 1, SATA 2, and SATA 3. SATA 3 can operate at 6 gigs. SATA 2 operates at 3 gigs, and SATA 1 is pretty much not used anymore. Other thing we have is a SAS, which is SAS stands for Serial Attached SCSI. Serial attached SCSIs are most commonly used inside of RAIDs, and they're also used inside of servers. The SCSI is how the motherboard communicates with the hard drive itself. Access speeds. With access speeds, you do have certain drives that have certain speeds attached to them. Latency is how slow something is, and then the access time is how long it takes to be able to access that. Whenever it comes to a network, you want to be able to access the drives quickly. You want to be able to get to the position, you want to be able to get to what you need, the information, you don't want to have to wait. So the access times is actually really important. And the higher the latency, the worse your network will be, the slower it will be. You'll be creating a bottleneck. And on a bottleneck is never a good thing whenever it comes to a network whenever you need information. The hard disk speeds, each drive has its own speeds, however there are particular ways that you can overcome those speeds. As I mentioned earlier, SATA 3 runs at 6 gigs. However, you can run that faster if you RAID them, and we'll talk about that later also. Solid state drives. Solid state drives are pretty much the fastest drives that we have out there. Solid state drives are, they have no spinning parts, they have no moving parts. A solid state drive has flash modules on top of it. 
that allows it to be able to access information quickly. Solid state drives are a high performance device. However, the cost of solid state drives is pretty expensive. Most networks don't have very many solid state drives and most companies that do implement solid state drives, they have a solid state drive for the operating system and that's it. They don't have programs loaded on that. The programs are loaded onto an additional hard drive, maybe a SATA hard drive. USB drives. USB drives are plug and play. They allow you to be able to plug into a PC without having to shut the computer down. You're able to plug them in while the computer's turned on, get what you need, eject the drive, and pull it out and go on your way. They also assign a drive letter in the OS. If you ever notice, whenever you plug in a USB drive and then you go to my computer, you're able to see what drive. You're able to see the letter of it and you're able to access it as if it's an actual drive. The power that USB drives get is from the actual port itself. Some USB drives require external power. They do require you to plug into the wall outlet to get AC power so that way they're able to use what they need to provide performance to the hard drive. USB drives are best used with temporary transfers. They're not meant for long-term storage. USB drives shouldn't really be meet isn't really a means to keep information for a long time. However, a USB drive is a way to get information here and there temporarily. Transferring files from home to work, you can use a USB drive if needed. Tapes. The other thing, other type of removable media is tapes. Tapes are a common way of storing backups. Tapes use a magnetic strip. They're just like with the VCR. Back whenever people used to use VCR, there was a black ribbon. That's where the information was stored on. Well, tapes utilize the same thing. However, tapes, as I said, primarily used for backups, are used to create a monthly backup or a yearly backup, save it, take it to another site, so that way, in case something happens on that site, they're able to get some of their information back. Maybe there was a fire inside the building, and the fire burned up all the servers and burned up all the tapes that are locally. Well. If those tapes are saved somewhere else, on a different building or a different state, then they're able to access that information and they won't lose the information that they have. However, tapes, they do have a slow seek time. You're limited to the device itself. You have to have a secondary device to be able to work with the tape itself. Tiering. We're going to talk about the performance level for each tier and the policies that tiering has to do with. Tiering is split into four different tiers. You have Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Tier 1 is mission critical. Mission critical things would be like performance, capacity, reliability, and management. With Tier 1, you have fast servers, you have large storage pools, you have low latency, and you also have a large reliability and redundancy and fault tolerance whenever it comes to Tier 1. Most of the time, Tier 1 is used when you need to have information given to you quickly. Google, for example, would have Tier 1. Amazon would have Tier 1. Netflix would have Tier 1. They would use Tier 1 to be able to give their customers what they need. Tier 2 is major business applications. It needs to be reliable and fast. So with Tier 2, they need to be able to get to their plate. They need to get what they need quickly. So speed is a little bit more important. However, the reliability of having the information there whenever they need it is also needed too. Tier 3 is for financial data. It's not accessed often, but whenever they need it, that's whenever they really need to access it. The information will be saved and sitting on the side ready for the people whenever they need it. However, they won't be accessing it a lot. They won't be accessing it often, but whenever they need it, they need the information. Tier 4 is for storage email for long periods. You would use Tier 4 in a company where they need to access information every now and then, where basically they have email saved or they have certain types of files saved and they need to get to that stuff roughly every now and then but they don't have to have it at all or don't have to have it that often. The next thing we have is policies and policies are how you fit information into each one of the tiers. But it doesn't have to do with just fitting information in each one of the tiers, it also has to do with how the organization is going to handle the data and how the customer is going to handle the data. You have something called a service license agreement. The service license agreement is where you have an agreement between the two parties, the customer and the provider, of what they will be able to access, how they will access it, what they can store, and how often the information is available to them.